Hello, my friends. I'm Kristen, the anxiety therapist, and thanks for checking out my vlog this week. As a therapist specializing in anxiety, I've really seen firsthand how perfectionism can be sort of this relentless driver of anxiety. And as a recovering perfectionist myself, this is a topic that's very close to home. So I wanted to dive deeper into the world of perfectionism, talk about some of its root causes, understand who it tends to affect, and then just explore some practical tips to help conquer it or manage it. So what is perfectionism anyway? Basically, it's like this overzealous friend who is constantly whispering in your ear that it's not good enough. So it's this relentless pursuit of flawlessness and setting impossibly high standards and feeling like anything less than that is a failure. So why do some of us fall into this trap? Some of the root causes of perfectionism include high expectations. A lot of times perfectionism will start with very well-intentioned parents or role models who set high expectations and while aiming for excellence is admirable, when the bar is set impossibly high it can fuel perfectionism. There is also an immense fear of failure. Perfectionists dread making mistakes and they view failure as a reflection of their self-worth which then can intensify anxiety. There's a lot of seeking of excellence external validation. So seeking constant approval from others can really drive perfectionism. There's this need for praise and recognition that really kind of becomes overwhelming and people will go to great lengths to get that. And then there's societal pressure. So our society really glorifies perfection. Social media showcases these curated images of seemingly flawless lives and this creates some unrealistic standards that many of us strive to meet. We also live in a very competitive culture and one that kind of thrives on comparison. And this is really, I love the quote that comparison is the thief of joy because if you're comparing yourself to others, it's likely that you will never feel like you measure up and that can sort of add fuel to the fire of perfectionism. So who does perfectionism affect? It really doesn't discriminate. It can affect anyone and its impact can vary carry across different life domains. We see it a lot in students, you know, in academic settings, students might strive for perfect grades leading to intense stress and anxiety. There might be a fear of not meeting expectations, which can kind of become paralyzing or lead to procrastination. And this can really hinder their ability to learn and grow. We see it a ton with professionals. I work with a lot of professionals in my practice doing one-on-one -on -one therapy and perfectionism in the workplace can really lead to burnout. Perfectionists typically overwork themselves. They never really feel satisfied with their accomplishments or give themselves the space and time to bask in the joy of those accomplishments. So this constant pressure can really harm mental health and job satisfaction. It can occur in parents. Parental perfectionism can affect both parents and children. There's this sort of unrelenting pursuit to be the perfect parent that can lead to a lot of feelings of inadequacy and stress especially again with social media, we kind of see what other parents are doing or their opinions about things and that can really have a detrimental effect. We see it in athletes. Athletes striving for perfection, they might push their bodies beyond healthy limits, risking injury and some psychological distress. And this constant pursuit of performance can really erode mental well-being. I think more and more athletes have come forward like Simone Biles, just in terms of how their mental health is affected by some of the stress and pressure that they are under. It can affect artists and creative. Perfectionism can stifle creativity. Artists or writers, they might struggle to start or finish projects due to the fear that they won't meet their own impossibly high standards. And then relationships too. Perfectionism can seep into relationships and cause individuals to have unrealistic expectations of their partners. And this can really strain partnerships and lead to feelings of disappointment or resentment. So finally, we wanna talk 
about some practical tips for conquering perfectionism. So the first being to set realistic goals. Shift from perfectionistic goals to realistic ones and understand that it's okay to make mistakes, that these are actually opportunities for growth. And a lot of times we have to go through the process of doing something incorrectly or doing something in a way that leads to disappointment in order to grow from those experiences. And to remember that goals can be flexible. A lot of times perfectionists will have sort of these rigid goals and we need to adjust our goals according to what is going on in our lives, right? And what we're kind of capable of, how much bandwidth we have. We want to practice self-compassion. Be as kind to yourself as you would to a friend. Treat your mistakes with understanding and not self-criticism or berating yourself in some way. We want to challenge negative thoughts. Recognize and challenge those inner perfectionist thoughts. Ask yourself if they're rational or if they're just kind of feeding your anxiety. We want to prioritize self-care, being sure that we regularly engage in activities that help us relax and unwind, whether that's meditation, yoga, reading a book, whatever it is that you do for self-care where you don't feel like you are under pressure. And then seeking support. That can be professionally with a therapist or counselor, or it can be just leaning on your family and friends, but they can help provide some strategies for managing perfectionism and anxiety or a lot of times they can just provide a more rational and realistic view of things and expectations. So just to wrap up, perfectionism can be this relentless source of anxiety that affects people across various aspects of life. But if you understand its root causes, especially for yourself, you know, where it kind of stems from, and practice self-compassion and set these realistic goals, you can really start to break free from the perfect trap. Remember, you're not alone in this. So many people struggle with perfectionism and anxiety. They're like best friends that go hand in hand. Definitely seek support, and that's really a sign of strength, not weakness. You know, a lot of times perfectionists have a hard time asking for help and feel like they wanna do it on their own. So I hope you found these insights helpful. If you'd like more tips or information on managing anxiety or perfectionism, don't forget to sign up for my email list. And that link will be included or it can be found on my website, which is catharticspacecounseling.com. And I hope you all have a great week. I'll see you next time.